Were you excited for today's message? How many of you here were last week? So we, we talked about the end times. And here's, here's basically what we said. We, the message last week was a, was a message of encouragement in a, in a time that's really, really challenging. Where we're, we're in a season of, of uncertainty and, and a lot of, just a lot of things going on. And so the goal of that message was to help, message was to encourage you. And here's what we said. We said that here's something to, to, to hold on to, right? That Christ made a promise. What was his promise? He's coming back, right? John 14, he said, if I go away, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And he said, you know, I'm going to make you this promise. I'm going to come back. And here, here's the reality of that. The place that I'm preparing for you is going to blow your mind. If you can think of the most exotic place, a place that you would like to go, that's beautiful, that you would just be, take your breath away and just multiply it to the nth degree, you'll have heaven, right? So we got so much to look forward to in heaven. That's encouraging, right? But we also said that wickedness, that's what Jesus said, not me. Jesus said it, that wickedness would abound. And because of that, the, the love of many would grow cold. And we said, that's a, that's a warning for us as the body of Christ. Because that message was for the church. And so the challenge is, what can I do? How can I stay focused? How can I not get distracted in an age where there's so much uncertainty, there's so much despair and so much hurt and pain? How can I not get distracted and, and lose out and my love for Christ grow cold? And so we, we challenged you with that. And then we also said that before the end times that the gospel is going to be preached. The good news of Jesus Christ. And then he said... Here's what happens. What's going to happen once the gospel's preached? And then the end. So today what I want to do is I want to challenge you with that message, that gospel message. Now, again, some of you have been in church and you've, you've heard messages about how to share your faith. I believe this one's going to be really practical for you. And if you'll lean in, I think God will help you. Okay? But here's the challenge. Number one, lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh. Amen? Secondly, understand that this gospel needs to be preached. And that's the, the direction I want to go today. And so I want to start in the, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 52. If you'll go with me there, verse 7. Here's what it says. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet, say feet, feet of those who bring what kind of news? Good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. And so the message today is two parts. It's about the messenger, amen, and it's about the message. So when you look at that scripture passage, it says that there's a message being proclaimed, right? Now, what does a messenger do? A person who's a messenger, what do they do? They carry some kind of news, right? And typically it's from some higher authority, and they're, they're going to go and share the message or the news with as many people as will hear, right? Sometimes the news is good. Sometimes it's bad. But for us right here in this passage, what is the news that we're sharing? It's good news. And it says that the feet of the person who shares it, it's beautiful, now, the other thing that you saw in there is that we're bringing, we're bringing news of peace. How many of you know that Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace? That although there's turmoil and there's, and there's all kind of things going on in the world, Jesus Christ, when we look to Him, He brings peace. So the, the message that we give is not just a message of good news. It's a message of peace. It's a message of good tidings. And so... The message is a good one. And so what I want to say is to start with, we have to have a messenger. There has to be a, a person who's willing to carry that news. How many say, Pastor, I want to be a messenger of the good news? That's what today is, a good messenger. So go with me to Luke chapter 2, or 10, verse 2. Here's what he said. Jesus was speaking to his disciples. He told them, he said, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. 
Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. What is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying there are people around you who need to hear this good news that Christ came, lived a sinless life, died a cruel death on the cross, and walked out of the tomb. That's the good news. And so there are people around you who are hurting, who are disillusioned, who are, who've lost hope, who need to hear that Christ came to bring peace. Amen? And so this good messenger understands that's the reality. Do you realize that in, in, a, in the, uh, the world, since, since Jesus returned back to heaven some 2,020 years ago, right? That there, are, there have been, it went from 12 disciples to, um, to 2.5 billion people in the world that are Christians. That's good news. Come on, you can put your hands together for that. Here's, the, here's another thing, that across the globe, now this is worldwide, the, the, the gospel is being preached, Christianity is growing at a, a rate of 1.27%, which is just above the population rate. That's good news, right? Good news? In Asia and Africa, the gospel is, is exploding. People are getting saved every single day by the thousands in those, on, in those continents. That's, not, that's good news, isn't it? Here's more good news. Since Jesus' return, 2,020 years, the last 40 years, there have been more people come to faith in Christ in those 40 years than in the entire span of the other 1,940 isn't that great news? You know what that tells me? Christ is ready to come back. He is shaping things up for his return. And he, he promised that in the last days he would pour out his spirit on all flesh. And so, folks, that's good news. I got a little bit of bad news for you. You ready for it? Guess where the gospel is not expanding? In our own nation. It's actually declining. Church attendance has declined. That sounds really bad, but you know what? There's hope. Right? Why is there hope? Because there are a group of people who've gathered right here at 1115 on a Sunday morning at Grow Church who are good messengers. Come on, somebody. Turn to your neighbor and say there's hope because of you. Come on. Tell them there's hope because of you. So, so what am I doing? I've just set you up, hadn't I? Because some of you are like, Pastor, I don't know. I don't know if I can share this good news. Can I say you can? And I want to give you, I want to help you today if you'll lean into this. So, the harvest is plentiful. There are people out there whose hearts are ready. Listen, do you realize that COVID is awful? Is COVID awful? But did God, is God using COVID? Absolutely he is. Because you know what he's done? He's positioned people. Now they're disillusioned. They're, they're hurting. They're, they don't know where to turn. And what he's done, he's positioned them. And they're right for, to, for you to share with them. The only, listen to me, folks. There's not many remedies. There's only one remedy. What's the remedy? Jesus Christ clothed himself in flesh, lived a sinless life. I know you get tired of hearing me say this, but this is the gospel in a nutshell. Died on the cross, rose from the dead, and ascended back to heaven. Here's, here's the, the good news is the only thing that will remedy the hopelessness, the uncertainty, the anxiety, and the worry is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And guess what gospel means? Anybody know what it means? That word gospel means good news. So it's not bad news, it's good news. And you and I have that news to share. So let me walk you through some steps to help you share your faith with confidence. Okay? Number one, we need to accept that sharing the gospel is our personal responsibility. It's not left up to just people who work at church full time like me. It's not left up to our staff. It's every person who names the name of Christ. Amen. 
And so Christ has commissioned us, every believer, as ambassadors. What does an ambassador do? Anybody know what an ambassador does? If you think, if you think about it, ambassadors, they'll, they'll leave a country and they'll go and, and serve or talk to another country or, or government on behalf of another one, right? And so what is God saying? You're my ambassadors. In other words, you're going to talk to people for me. Now, do ambassadors go to another country with guns blazing? They do? No, they don't. They come in peace. They come in goodwill. That's what they share. They share with goodwill. And so here's what Jesus said. You're my ambassadors. In other words, when you go, share it with goodwill. I understand why some of you are afraid to share your faith because here's your picture of evangelism. Y'all with me? A guy on the street corner, okay, with a suit and tie, with a huge Bible, telling everybody they're going to hell. Has anybody seen anybody like that? Now listen, I'm not saying that maybe they've won some people to Christ, but when I look in Scripture, when I see how Jesus operated, he didn't operate that way. As a matter of fact, the opposite is true. And so I'll get it. It may be a little intimidating because you don't want to go out in the, on the streets and holler at people and scream at them and tell them they're going to hell. I agree. I'm with you. All right? Y'all follow me. So if that's not the way to do it, then how do we do it, Pastor? Well, I'm going to help you. Okay? So look at this. Watch this. Romans 10, 10 chapter 13. I mean, yeah, chapter 10, verse 13. Now, before I, before I read this, how many of you have friends, neighbors, co-workers, family members that are outside the faith? Whose responsibility is it to share the gospel with them? Amen. So watch this. Here, here it says, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Is that good news? It's the best news ever. You know what it tells me? That I didn't have much to do with my salvation. All I've got to do is believe on the Lord Jesus and place my faith in his finished work on the cross, and I'm saved. It's not that difficult. Guess who made it difficult? Me and you. Because here's why we, we try to tell them, hey, you know, um, maybe, you, maybe you need to clean your act up before you come, come to church. I've never, I've never understood that. Why somebody has to clean their act up before they come to church. The church is supposed to be a hospital for people. Amen? You don't send well people to the hospital. How I many you, when you're, when you're feeling all great and, and dandy, you go to the hospital? You don't do it. It's absurd. So why do we say that to people? I think we've gotten it backwards. Watch what he says. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they've not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? Watch this. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who do what? Bring good news. Paul is quoting Isaiah 52.7. He is re reiterating the heart of God for this message is the people who are willing to share are, are bearers of good news. They're beautiful. Your feet are beautiful. Tell them you're... Oh, don't do that. Maybe don't do that. Maybe. I don't know. Lori always told me... Have, have I told you all this before? Okay, I won't share it again then. Those of you that haven't heard it... <laughs> Lori told me she'd never marry me if my feet were ugly, so anyway. But how beautiful are the feet of those who share good news. So the responsibility is on us because if we don't go, guess what? They ain't going to hear. For some reason, Jesus set it up this way that we would be his messengers. And the enemy is trying to hinder us out of fear, out of uncertainty, from sharing this good news, because that's exactly what it is. So, number one, accept the personal re responsibility. Number two, develop a personal relationship. So instead of going on the street and hollering at people, why don't you just start befriending people? Right? Connect with them. 
on a relationship. And so here's what I believe. I believe that Christ was setting in a second example. Have you remembered the story of Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus was a wee little man. Anybody know that one? And a wee little man was he. For he climbed, what is it? Climbed up in the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. So we all know it. But think about the story of the, this story of Zacchaeus. Can I give you a little backstory on who he was? Zacchaeus was a tax collector. Some of you, that may not mean much, but in that culture, they were, they were dirty, rotten scoundrels. Let's just put it that way, okay? They were, they were nasty. They, were, they, were, they cheated people. And so this Zacchaeus wasn't a very nice guy, wasn't very well liked, had a terrible reputation. And so there's one day, Jesus, he hears Jesus is going to come by, and he, 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 is, he is tiny. And so he climbs up in a tree, and he's going to watch Jesus go by. And Jesus, their eyes catch, and Jesus says, did he say this? Zacchaeus, come down to that tree, you're going to hell. What did he say? Is that what he said? Not, a, not at all. Here's what he said. Hey, Zacchaeus, come down from the tree, we're going to Buffalo Wild Wings. Y'all like Buffalo Wild Wings? Have you ever tried the Asian Zing wings? Let, can I just go ahead and recommend those? If, if you ever go to Buffalo Wild Wings, get the Asian Zing. Anyway, that's right. Anyway, thank you. Thank you for get, put, keeping me on track. So he says, Zacchaeus, come down from there. I'm, we're going to go hang out and eat a little bit. And that's what happens. So Zacchaeus. So Zacchaeus and Jesus have a meal together. Well, we don't, see, we don't have a record of what the conversation was between the two of them, but we knew, do know an outcome. What was the outcome? Zacchaeus comes out of that meeting, that lunch, saying, you know what, whatever I've stolen, whatever I've done and cheated people, I'm going to give it back, and I'm, and I'm going to follow Jesus from now on. Listen, something happened between the time he climbed out of that tree and he met with Jesus. Can I tell you that Jesus can change a heart? Can I tell you that Jesus transforms from the inside out, not the outside in? That's why it's so, I mean, it just makes me so mad when I hear somebody say, well, you know, I told that person they couldn't come in here because they were dressed a certain way. What are you doing? What if that person that you just told, don't, you can't come in here in this church dressed a certain way, needed Jesus more than ever, and they never, ever gave him another chance? Instead, here's what we do. You know what, sweetheart? We're glad you're here. We're, we were praying for you. We love on them. We connect with them. And we let Jesus do the inside work. Amen. Did I mention that he's good at transforming the heart? But the problem is we have put ourselves in the place where if we feel like we're the ones that have to change them. And we don't. I've given this analogy before, too. How many of you would ever, ever dare clean a fish before you catch it? Is that absurd? Could you imagine somebody in a boat? Oh, oh let, me go, let me jump in and see if I can clean these fish up before we, we, we get them in the boat. No, no, no. We don't do that. We've got this backwards. No, we love them. We care about them. We share with them the good news, and we let, them, let the Lord change their heart. So we need to develop a personal relationship with them. Here's what Paul said. This is, I'll be reading from the Living Bible. Watch what he says. When I'm with those whose consciences bother them easily, I don't act as though I know it all and don't say they are foolish. The result is, listen to the, watch this, that they are willing to let me help them. I try to find common ground with him that he will let me tell him about Christ. That's your job. What's his job? And let Christ do the saving. Can I tell you that, this? That as a messenger, all you're responsible for is sharing the news. You understand? A king is not expecting a messenger to do any changing. All he's doing is you go and tell him what I told him to, what I told you to say. Amen. And that's all Jesus is saying. Listen, you go and tell them what I'm telling you to say. And here's what I want you to say. Jesus Christ came, lived a sinless life, died a cruel death on the cross, walked out of the tomb. How simple is that? That, my friends, is the message. 
That's the message that the world that's, un, that's uncertain, that's hurting, that's disillusioned, that's the message they need to hear. It will transform their hearts. It's the, it's the remedy for, for any kind of racial stuff going on. It's the remedy for COVID. It's the remedy for the financial. It's, it's the remedy for everything. It's a good message, right? Okay. So here's the third one. Share your personal story. How many of you have a story to tell? Here may be one of your stories. I was religious. I was bound up in legalism and trying to follow a set of rules, and I was unhappy. I was miserable. People didn't want to be around me, but something happened. Christ got a hold of my heart, and now I love him with all my heart, and I serve him not because I, somebody tells me I have to. I get to serve him because I want to. Is that anybody's story this morning? Here's the other story. Some of you were, you were like Zacchaeus. You were dirty, rotten scoundrels. Is anybody, is that your story? Y'all lying. Folks, you're one or the other. Amen? And so the truth is, Christ rescued you from something. You came from somewhere. And when people look at you, they see the difference in you. They see you're kinder. You're more gentle than you used to be. You're loving to your family. You're working hard. You're, you're managing your finances really, really good. Something changed. And what are they going to do? They're going to ask you, what happened? I'm glad you mentioned that. See, they can't argue with a changed life. Christ Work in your heart is the most powerful story that you can share. They can't argue with it. And so let me challenge you. If you have a story, share it. Here's how Peter described it in 1 Peter chapter 3. He said, instead you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks you about your hope as a believer, what are you supposed to do? Sometimes be ready to explain it. Every once in a while be ready to explain it. What does it say? Always be ready to explain it. Here's how, here's how I believe it. I believe every single day God gives you opportunity. There's somebody that you cross paths with that needs to hear this good news. And when you're ready and you're sensitive, he will say, talk to that one. It could be at the water cooler. It could be at your desk. It could be walking your neighborhood. It could be, I don't know, in the grocery store. God says to you, share. Peter's saying, be ready. But watch what he says. Watch the attitude and the posture that he says to do it in. What does he say? But do this in a gentle and respectful way. In other words, you're not hollering at them. You're going to hell. No, it's gentle and respectful. Why? Because you love the person. Because you know God loves the person. And so you share it in a gentle and, and con in a respectful way that you keep a clear conscience. Then if we speak people, if people speak against you, they'll be ashamed when they see what good life you live because, because why? You belong to Christ. Turn to your neighbor and say, You belong to him. You're... Folks, you understand what I'm saying? So accept the personal responsibility. Right? Develop a personal relationship. Share your story. And then lastly, give them a personal invitation. Now, when I say that, maybe you share the gospel with them and you feel like they're ready right then. Look, if they're ready to pray for, to receive Christ, go for it. They, look, listen, folks, they don't have to be in a church to get saved. Amen? So you can share your faith with them, lead them to Christ right then. And then here's the other thing, invite them to come to church with you. Why? Because this is the place where they can grow. Now, if you don't feel comfortable praying with them then, bring them to church. I'll pray for them. Amen? Because it's our responsibility. And this is a place, this is the place where they begin to grow. Because how many of you realize that a place in your faith in Christ, that's just the start of the journey? It's the starting blocks like we talked about earlier. So we talked about a good messenger. Let's talk about a good message here. So the messenger gives the message, right? Here's the news. If you're taking notes, number one, here's the good message. 
You can share this. God loves you and sent his son to pay for your sins. That's the essence of the gospel, isn't it? So you share that with people. Hey, um, let me tell you that God loves you and wants to have a personal relationship with you. And here's, why, here's how he showed it. He, he died for you. John 3, 16. Watch what it says. For this is how God, what did he do? He loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him should not perish or will not perish but have eternal life. He loves you, and, he's, and he paid the price for you. That's the message. Here's a second message that you can share with them. God can give you peace no matter what the circumstances. Is that a much-needed message today? Folks, I need that message today, don't you? But here's what I'm reminded of. Christ reminds me every single day that he's the prince of peace. That it doesn't matter what the circumstances look around, like around me. People dying, you know, people in the streets rioting. I still can have peace because of Christ on the inside. Here's the reality of this. I'll say, I'll say it like this. You can have the peace of God because you have peace with God. Can I say that one more time? You can have the peace of God because you have peace with him. That peace is only made possible by Christ's finished work on the cross. Here's how Jesus said it. Because he didn't promise, folks. He did not promise that you're going to have it easy. At the moment you, that the moment you accept Christ, that you're going to be able to sit on the couch, eat bonbons or whatever by the pool and all the time, have a, a grand old time. Is that not, that's not what he said, right? Here's what he said, John 16, 33. He said, he said, I have told you all this that you may have peace. In who? Not in me, in him. But why? Because he's the source of peace. So that everyone who, um, excuse me, I read the wrong one there. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart. Why? Because I have overcome the world. Isn't that great news this morning? And so these people that you know that are disillusioned, that are anxious, that are worried, that are, have no peace right now, you share with them the message of peace, and they can experience it like you are. This is the good message, is it not? This is good news. Here's another one. This is God will give you the strength to make it through. Here's what I believe. All hell's breaking loose all around us. But we're not giving up. Amen? We are in this thing for the long haul. Watch what he says. Here's what Paul says. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. If the good news we preach is hidden behind a veil, it's hidden only from those people who are perishing. And so what's, what's, the, what's the urgency? Let's get those people in the know, Right? And then watch what he says in, in verse 8. We are pressed on every side by what? By troubles. But we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. I don't know about you. Since March, there have been some times when I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. I can't figure this thing out. Anybody else been perplexed? But I'm not in despair. Why? Because I always point to the one who is in control of every bit of it. And then watch what he says. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we get up again, right? We're not destroyed. Why are we not destroyed? Because of what Paul said in Romans 8, that nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate me from the love of Christ. That I'm in the palm of his hand. Those are pretty powerful hands, amen? The same hands that form the stars and form the world and breathe life into man is the same palm that my, my, hand, my life is in. Amen. So I don't have to be discouraged and dismayed. And I can share that story. You can make it. Don't give up. Here's the last one. God is ready to save you right now. God's not trying to hide, folks. You realize that. 
He's not over in the corner somewhere trying, you know, when we try to find him, he's running somewhere else. No, as a matter of fact, he was the pursuer in the relationship. So if you'll lead somebody, if you'll, if you'll be that good messenger, if you'll share that good message, Christ is ready to save them right now. So all you have to do is say, look, Christ wants to save you this very moment. He wants to transform your life. Because here's what I picture. I picture the, the, uh, the prodigal son's father. You remember the, that story? What is he constantly doing? He's looking over the horizon, watching for the, his son to come home. Here's, here's, what, here's what I believe. God's waiting. He's, he's ready and willing at any moment to save you. What's your, what's your part? What's your part? Romans 10, verse 9. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, what? You'll be saved. For it is by, by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it's by openly declaring your faith that you're saved. Folks, again, it's not about following a set of rules. It's, it's not about cleaning your life up. It's about placing your faith in Christ's finished work on the cross. Here's, here's how Paul said it. He said it's by grace you're saved through faith, not of works. Why? Because he didn't want you to take credit for it. So that no one would boast. We complicate the gospel. All you are is the messenger. Share the message. Let Christ do the work. Amen? So before, we're, before we close this thing, I got, some test, I got a, a baby testifying today. She's saying I'm witnessing this message. Amen? Come on. Out of the mouth of babes, you've ordained praise. Amen? She's helping me preach today, guys. When y'all don't amen, she will. How about that? I'm going to leave you with some questions, okay? What can you do today to get this message out? Here's another one. Who do you already have a personal relationship with that you need to share the gospel with? Already, I, I could see it. Names popping in your mind. Right? Number three. What is your personal story of how Christ saved you? Some of you, sometime this week, need to go home and write out your personal testimony. Because when you do, first of all, you'll probably be emotional. Why? Because you'll remember how transformational this gospel is. And then you'll be able to share it with clarity with those who need to hear it, right? And then here's the last one. Are you open to a daily intersection? What do I mean by that? Are you open to, to Christ bringing somebody in your path that needs to hear the gospel and sharing it with them? It could be in the grocery store. And that person behind you, you can tell they're distraught. Or, and, you're, and God opens up a door for you to share. Or you're walking the neighborhood and people are, are stopping and they're, you're talking to them and the Holy Spirit begins to impress on you. Are you open to those daily intersections? Because can I tell you, I believe God sends them to you every day. And the challenge is, are you sensitive enough? Are you open enough to step through that opening? Because here's what I believe. If he's brought somebody to you, he's already been working on their heart. And so at that point, you're the good messenger sharing a good message, right? Did I mention that beautiful are the feet of those who share or bring the good news? That's us. Amen? Thank you for tuning in to our online broadcast here at Grow Church. We hope that you've heard something today that will strengthen and encourage you throughout the week. Make sure you tune in next week for our next broadcast. God bless.